So you're here because you want to find out more about this filter by Tiffin, the smoke filter, which turns something that looks like this into this. And as you can see here, it is quite hazy. It looks like I hazed up this entire place with a smoke machine. But that, it's a little bit too distracting right now. So let me move it around. So I'll talk about this smoke diffusion filter and how it compares with other filters, specifically the Moment Cinebloom filter, which is a filter that I really enjoy that I use almost 90% of the time when I shoot my videos. The smoke filter is actually quite different than the Cinebloom filter, but I'll show you these comparisons so you can determine for yourself which one suits your needs better and what kind of look you get from these two different filters. There are also some drawbacks and some things that I do not quite like about the smoke filter, so stay tuned for that, which I'll talk about later on in the video. And also before we continue, Tiffin did not send me this filter. I purchased this on my own money because I wanted to experiment with this look. So the smoke filter actually comes in four different strengths. I got the smoke two filter, which is sort of in that middle range. And if you look at Tiffin's diffusion triangle, you can see that this filter sits towards the right meaning that there is a reduction in contrast. So the highlights are brought down and the shadows are raised up. The smoke filter also has less halation compared to the very popular black pro mist that is on the other side and it has more halation and more blooming of the highlights. The smoke filter is one of Tiffin's atmospheric haze filters and what it does primarily is just to add haze, artificial haze to your scene. So the first thing you notice is that it has less contrast because it makes it look like smoke and atmospheric haze has been added to the room. And if you watch movies or shows that are shot cinematically, you notice that a lot of movies haze up their interior shots and actually even their exterior shots as well. And that's just something that adds more atmosphere, more depth to the scene, and it just makes the entire shot more cinematic. In the examples here, you see that although there are already a few layers of depth, depth, I have trouble with that word all the time, but as you can see, even though there are layers of depth, as soon as you add this fake smoke or fake atmospheric haze, the depth kind of gets accentuated and it gives you an impression that there is even more depth in the image because now you get all that atmosphere added to the scene. And you can say, well, why not just haze up the scene, just get a smoke machine? Well, there are a few reasons why sometimes you may not be able to do that depending on where you're shooting. Let's say you're shooting in an old building or a historical building and then don't allow you to bring in a haze machine or a smoke machine, then you have no choice but to use one of these. Or maybe you're not allowed to haze up a room because it may trigger the fire alarm, which is very probable. So that's why you may be looking at something like this to help you out. So this is what the Cinebloom filter looks like. This is the uh, 10% and this is what the smoke filter looks like. As you can see, the Cinebloom filter softens the image a bit and it halates the light sources. The smoke one reduces the contrast, lifts the shadows and it lowers the highlights and it just adds that atmosphere. Here is what it looks like when I have a straight light source pointing at the camera with the Cinebloom filter on, as well as with the Smoke 2 filter, and as well as without the, any of these filters. I have to say that I'm really enjoying the way the Smoke filter looks, but there's one exception, one thing that I don't quite like. And you may have noticed by now, but if you haven't, this is what I do not like. With the Cinebloom, you get a nice halation around the points of light, around the, the light sources, and a nice little diffusion. But with the smoke filter, you get a weird glow with a weird gradient that is actually quite distracting depending on how the light or where the light source is in comparison to your scene. If you're using this filter, that is something that you might want to consider if you have a light source like that. So for example, you may like what this looks like, but I think it might be a little bit too distracting. I think the Cinebloom gives you a softer look, like a less distracting sort of halation, 
this one is a little bit too much in my opinion unless you're doing like a star wars thing and uh this is your lightsaber and you want to really emphasize that halation or that blue in my opinion for the smoke filter to look its best it's better to have light coming in from the side and not have a direct source of light pointing directly at the lens here are some shots with this filter outside because you can't control the lighting as much depending on how your scene is how your light sources are the smoke filter might not be the best choice in my opinion though the smoke filter is better utilized indoors in a controlled environment or in a darker scene even to make things more moody and more cinematic and just haze up your room but using it outdoors can also give you a different look too so feel free to experiment and see what works best for you just for fun let's have a comparison to see what it looks like when i stack the cinebloom filter with this smoke filter and what it looks like without any of these two filters I also want to mention that adding this smoke filter in front of your lens is not going to make everything cinematic right away. You still have to go ahead and color correct and color grade that footage a tiny bit just to give it that extra punch. Mm -hmm. 